All right, welcome to uh, part two of the fire tutorial. Um, as you can see, this is kind of where we left off uh, on the last one. We had the Maya default fire set to our object, so let's kind of carry on from there. Um, right now, you can see I'm in Mental Ray, and you may want to be in um, Maya Software. We'll take a quick render in Maya Software. Um, maybe just pick or choose your renderer um, first before we start doing this stuff. Um, I think what we'll do just for the sake of I will um, I'll just stay with Maya for the moment and work with Maya's default um, and you can use mental ray just remember you're gonna have slightly different looks um, and you're gonna have to fine-tune this a lot so let's get started I'm gonna take a look at the fire is pretty hot right now and as you can see I have my particle cloud 2 tab open and that's my particle cloud 2 so I'm gonna move my render view here for my render for a second and you can notice that's what I have chosen here. Now, if I want to choose my other particle cloud, I can just go on here, and that will generally bring up your particle cloud. If not, you'll have to look for them up here in your uh, tabs or you know your drop-down menu or something like that, and that'll give you all the properties. So let's stay simple for right now because there's so much you can do with fire. Um, first of all, I'm looking at this scene, and I'm going to bring my render view back over here a little bit. And actually, let's first choose our fire here. Let's choose our particle cloud 2 on our main object. And I'm going to bring my render view over. And you can notice that since I have this, I have attributes here I can work with. Great. Let's take a look at those first. Um, as you notice, you can't really do anything with these. Um, they're sort of by default um, off, um, basically, because that's the starting color of, of the ramp. And we'll get into that in a few seconds. But you'll notice that down here we have transparency, we have a density, and this we can mess around with. By default, Maya is set at 3.0, so let's whack it out a little bit. Let's bring this density down quite a bit, and let's have a look at what that does to our render. I'm going to click on here real quick, and uh, you'll notice right away that it brings down the density of the fire, the overall saturation, so to speak. Okay? So you'll notice that in the one up here, um, I'm not messing with that one, so it didn't really affect that, but it should have looked more like that, maybe, or even hotter. So let's look at the, bring it back up, and we were at about 3.0. Now let's bring it up way up there to 5 something, and we'll take a quick render, and you'll notice a dramatic difference. You'll see a lot more fire happening there. Um, you know that's a little little extreme for what we want or what I'm just messing around with so let's bring it back down to that density level down to a 3 or 2.5 we'll take a quick render and you'll be rendering a lot so this this tutorial mostly will be using the render a lot so I hope you can get used to this okay so let's stay with that for the moment and let's mess around with something else um, we could look at what translucence does um, first. Let's leave roundness at one, and let's bring this translucence all the way down, and we'll take a look at what that render does. So feel free to play around with um, all of these controls, um, and you'll kind of get an idea of what's happening. The, the translucence gives me a little bit more separation, which uh, you know may or may not be good. I don't know. Um, so we'll we'll mess it up. Uh, we'll go way up with the translucence now. And notice where we're at here, we have kind of a, a separation between our our you know sphere and the fire. Let's see what happens when we bring that translucence up. It usually takes a first pass and a second pass. And now you can see it's sort of you know obfuscating here a little bit better. I don't know. I mean, it makes not much of a difference at that point, but. And then also over here you have basically built-in noise and these are uh, kind of like expressions that just sort of uh, you know if you bring them down and play around with them you'll see what they do I'll bring those down a bit and we'll compare it um, it's more or less the activity within the fire itself so you know you may or may not notice much difference when you start messing with these and it all depends on on you know every setting affects another setting so um, feel free to play with those. Those are kind of cool. And um, that's about it for what you want to, or at least what I want to go over in, in this. Those are some first things to play with and the first things that will, uh, you know, uh, give you some control over what that fire starts looking like. So I'm going to bring my uh, density down a little bit 
and uh, I'll show you the roundness now. Now you'll notice that um, it sort of looks like that. Well, let's let's take our roundness down quite a bit. Let's take it down way down into there. And I'm going to go ahead and take a test render and see what it does. Okay, so you can see where it, it sort of um, uh, it's sort of you see less fire basically. Um, it sort of takes the shape of the overall fire down. So anyway, I think we're good just going with roundness up. We'll take another render. Now remember what this looks like. And it's kind of hard to tell between one render to the next. You sort of have to just uh, keep an eye out for it. Okay, so you can see we're getting more more fiery looking stuff. It's not quite as thin, I guess. Eh, whatever. Okay, now that particle cloud too, um, I'm going to bring the hypershade over here for a second and we're going to look at, at that uh, real quickly. Um, let's get all of our, our nodes over here and sort of see how this spider web is looking. Um, you'll notice there's a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot of connections being made over here for this shader that controls the fire. So essentially I have two different nodes here. I, I'm going to We'll just say we've got to separate these so you can actually see what's happening because they're um, okay, there's a whole lot of them. <laughs> it depends on how many uh, fire elements you have assigned. Um, all of these are individual shaders, and uh, as you can see, my network right now is more more over here. so i'm gonna I'm gonna grab these and bring them over a little bit and bring that over bring that over and that and that okay so you can see this is sort of one network right here it's called the particle cloud particle cloud 2 and what we have here are are the elements that are are hooked into there so if i click on this this over here this is sort of like a a ramp a starting ramp and you can play around with these selected colors let's just let's just mess around with this ramp a little bit I'm going to switch this selected color. If I get my choose that, I'll get my color chooser, and let's just say we, you know, set it into the blue spectrum, and hit accept. All right. Well, I'm going to come over here, and let's take a look at. I think that this is the ramp that's assigned to my. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, hold on. <laughs> anyway. I could go through this. You want you want to play around with that. That that'll that'll give you some some variance on on your your color. But for right now, it's just to show you where they, these are at. Um, this node right here is my 3D texture one, creator one, ramp two. I kind of want to find out where this is placed. Okay, so I'll just sort of click in here. You'll notice that um, you can change the colors um, a little bit and, and change your shaker value, which I know that doesn't mean much, but you're going to want to play around with some of that. Um, but essentially, this is just showing you kind of um, you know where to find these various properties. Um, you know, we could we could let's just whack some of these out here, see if they make a difference. Um, a lot of it is isolating exactly what you're working on and then figuring out what you want to do with that. Um, I'm going to switch a color here to something more like that. Let's hit accept and let's do this. Okay, you see by switching that ramp, this gives me a little bit more purplish look. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it's trial and error with this stuff, so you have to really whack things out. Um, just do a test, you know, make a sphere and then make some fire off of it, and then just mess around with these. Um, they're all right over here in your hypershade area. So there you go. Um, you can choose them from up here. I could choose a different particle cloud. Right now, I just have two that are operating on the scene: one that's assigned here and one that's assigned there. So you know, usually. Uh, we could find out what we're working on here. I've got this is my cloud two. Okay, so I want to make sure in the hypershade over here that I'm on cloud two. So if I click on cloud two, that highlights my network, and we are kind of working with that. So anyway, um, I'm going to 
click on that node and I'm gonna change this shaker color let's just try whacking this out to like say a green I'll go ahead and hit accept now you can see where it shows up in there but what does it actually look like as a render that's what we're concerned about so now that we have some green in let's do a render alright you can see where changing the shaker color actually changes your color so let's go in with a blue maybe I'm gonna switch over and maybe hit a blue and yeah, let's just hit accept and we'll take another render and I would guess that that's gonna turn out looking blue so anyway um, you can see there's all sorts of different uses for it um, you could just create like a, a fire that's um, you know not not very intense and have this rotating and and have a gravity field attached to that and it just look cool okay so lots of possibilities there now let's take a look at um, a couple of other things I'm gonna move my render view out of the way here and um, let's click on this over here that's our particle cloud and you know you can mess around with the turbulence a little bit um, you can mess around with the attenuation and frequency and really it's you're gonna have to be looking in here when you make changes with this um, I'm gonna rewind to the beginning we get our reaction and let's just say we we turn our attenuation way up um, yeah <laughs> you're gonna have to sort of uh, imagine how it looks um, you know just something to be aware of that you can mess around with your turbulence field and it also has a drag field so you know you can mess around with the drag direction and things like that so that's just something to know I'm gonna come back to my particle cloud though and um, let's take a look at these over here remember um, there's all sorts of different uh, things you can control um, by just keyframing uh, various uh, you know stuff here for example, um, let's look at our fire scale, and I'll just sort of start the uh, animation here, and we'll wait till it hits. Okay, so if I'm looking at the fire scale here, it's at a set at one. I'm going to come in here and maybe set that at three, and as you can see, it updates in the viewport. You kind of see it gets a lot more going on there. Let's just up it to maybe six. Um, go now; it's even bigger. Um, let's take a render uh, real quick I'll go ahead and hit my render view and the more stuff you add and the more stuff you start whacking out uh, the longer your renders are going to take um, in this case it's going to take quite a while for this to, to pull this one off and it's not looking too good so I think I'll just uh, yeah I think I'll just press escape and we'll interrupt that calculation okay so anyway uh, be aware of that right now the fire scale at six might be a, a computationally really expensive for Maya to figure out so let's just lower that back down to say like a two and um, I'll take a, let's see I'm gonna come over here into my render settings and just to make it a little faster I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm rendering out in 720 so I might just want to render out at 640 480 I'll move this over here and now we can uh, take another render so uh, let's see here let's let's see what that looks like okay here we are um, it's rendering much faster and it's a little smaller so there it is so that's playing with scale now you can also go down here and see where there's lots of other stuff um, like we have a density set of 10 maybe we'll change that density to like say 5 maybe half its density okay um, I'll take the same render here and see what see what kind of changes that's gonna upgrade to you can start seeing there's a little less of it um, if I take that density all the way down to 1 oh, let's go 1 and let's rewind the animation just because sometimes it's best to, to rewind and, and let it play out a little bit before you take a new render. It kind of freshens things up a bit. So there you go. You can see by lowering that density, it starts to have a much different look. All right. So there you go. I hope you've learned something. Go ahead and play around with all of those. Um, they are what they are. And um, have a great day. Read a book and learn something. <laughs> Thanks for watching.